Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Last week, the three-day trial it was happened in Andrew Warren versus Ron DeSantis. We're going to talk about that later in the show. We're going to bring in a law professor from Stetson University College of Law to talk about Warren versus DeSantis. And I want to also talk about some other state and local news. But first, we're going to hear the story about Tampa's police chief, Mary O'Connor, who resigned yesterday. And that resignation stems from the release of body cam footage from when she was a passenger in a golf golf cart without a tag by Pinellas County deputy last month. In a few seconds, we're going to talk to the reporter who requested this body cam footage. Here's Mary O'Connor. Is your camera on? It is. I'm the police chief in Tampa. Oh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. I'm hoping that you'll just let us go tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll say, yeah. Not to say I, I, you look familiar, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I do. <laughs> okay. So, all right, folks. Well, uh, have a good night. Well, joining us now is Justin Garcia, a reporter with Creative Loafing Tampa. Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad you could come on. Uh, this is quite literal. You and your dog I see in the background. Pedro. Cool. Hey, Pedro. Um, I'm sh- so I'm sure you don't want to reveal specifics about your sources, but what can you tell us about how you learned that this was going to be a story that you should pursue? Yeah, so initially I had two anonymous sources telling me kind of conflicting information about what happened. Um, and I had to kind of sort through that and narrow down the date. Uh, I will give credit to the PCSO public information officer. Um, they Pinellas worked County Sheriff. Kind of, yeah, yeah. They kind of worked with me to narrow down the information because initially one person was saying it was the day before it happened. One person was saying the actual day it happened. We didn't have an exact time frame initially, um, but we were able to narrow it down by looking through calls and stuff like that that occurred uh, in that area because we knew the general area of where it happened. Uh, but even then, uh, initially, PCSO said they couldn't find it. They closed my request. Um, I asked one of my anonymous sources and they said, I'm sure it happened. So I, I asked PCSO to reopen the request. They did. Uh, And then I gained a few more details that I was able to kind of hone in on. And that's when um, eventually after they had closed the request, after they told me to go talk to Clearwater Police Department, which I did um, to make sure it wasn't them. Then uh, finally they came back and said, hey, um, we actually did find this. And that was on Wednesday of last week. And that was the same day that O'Connor informed Caster that the video was going to come out. And then O'Connor showed Caster the video the next day after I received the video. So, and if I can take it from there, around that same time that you received a video from Pinellas County Sheriff's Office is about the time that Tampa police released it to the public. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, what, I, what took, what took the the city of Tampa, the, the mayor, the police chief, so long to come forward with this, especially once they realized that it, it was probably going to go public? They, they knew you were fishing around for it, that they that you were looking for this footage. At least the Pinellas County Sheriff knew. Um, what would do you think that they released it quickly or do you think that there was a um, kind of a time lag there? Um, So, yeah, they let me know last Wednesday that they had found the video based on the information I gave them. I had that in an email. And then they told me that there was going to be a delay in releasing it of about 24 hours because they had to do some redactions. That's what they said, at least. And so I said, okay, I can wait until tomorrow. Um, So while I was waiting, you know, I was kind of anxious thinking, you know, am I the first person to get it? So I reached out to them and said, hey, let me know if I'm the first person to get this period, you know, because they said we haven't released this to any media outlets. I was like, Am I the first person to get this at all? And they said yes. And when they released it to me, that was about, I would say, about 30 minutes before TBD put out their press release about it. So I've now put in a a public records request to PCSO to see if they talked to TBD at all in that time frame. You know, Uh, a major concern for a lot of people, I think, was that this did happen on November 12th. And uh, in the police internal affairs report, uh, O'Connor says that she told Castor about it on the 30th. So if that's true, why did she wait 18 days if she felt so bad about it, right? Um, that's that's a big kind of red flag in that situation. Um, and I'm, I'm still trying to put the pieces together if the video was released to TPD without TPD even making a public records request 
or if O'Connor contacted uh, PCSO to get the video. Um, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. I've put in a few public records requests to try to piece some of that together. Our guest is Justin Garcia. He's a reporter with Creative Loafing Tampa, and he unearthed the body cam vid video that essentially led to the resignation yesterday of Tampa's police chief, Mary O'Connor. So we're speaking to him about the process, and you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. So it's it seems like, based on the timeline that you're laying out, that Mayor Castor might not have known about this until the day before the police, uh, the, the body cam footage went public. So it sounds like it was the police chief herself who was kind of sitting on the information that she got pulled over and seems to have used a, a favor to, to kind of uh, get off from getting a ticket or, or whatnot. Um, how does that square in this in the whole investigation of whether she would lose her job yesterday or not? Um, so I will say that's what the city is saying happened. You're never sure that that happened, especially as a journalist, until you get some information confirming it. That's why I've made the public records request to see if um, I've made a request to see if Mario on those two days last week, Wednesday and Thursday, if Mary O'Connor talked to anybody on Castor's staff or to Castor herself just to confirm those facts, you know. Um, I think what played into her resignation was, you know, this, this story, even though this is some of the less egregious behavior that I've kind of caught TPD in and Mary O'Connor participating in, um, this story, just the, the aesthetics of it, you know, the visual of the, the deputy walking up and saying, hey, what's going on tonight? They're obviously doing something illegal. It's at the minimum a, a traffic violation and she just uses her badge to get out of it you know for a lot of for a lot of people who um have experienced you know disproportionate uh, targeting by the police um that looks very unfair right to use your privilege to to get out of that and so i think that's why it went viral why it became international news is because it kind of speaks to a larger issue of police using their status to get out of situations. And, you know, so they talked about it on CNN actually live and an ex-sergeant on CNN live said, yeah, we do that all the time, just kind of openly admitted and bragged about it. And so it speaks to this larger issue within police culture, as they call it. Our guest is Justin Garcia, a reporter with Creative Loafing Tampa. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM, WMNF.org. And Justin, you know, one of the things that that some people were surprised about when they saw this video is that it, it became widely known that the city of Tampa's police chief didn't even live in Tampa. She didn't even live in Hillsborough County. Uh, do you think that that any of that uh, blowback was was something significant? Yeah, I think that was that that's definitely something of concern. I will say that this is a. Uh common practice in Tampa and the leaders of Tampa. I have a short list of some of the people who help run the city who don't live here, who seem to have no intentions of living here. I don't want to assume, but um, one thing though is I'm pretty sure, and um, you know, I want to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure Mary O'Connor has two properties in the Tampa Bay area. One is um, over there in Oldsmar area, and the other one is in the Bayshore area. And uh, there are other uh, city leaders who kind of do the same thing. And then therefore you can claim that you live at two places, you know, and people are allowed to do that. So I don't think that played as much of a factor as just the the national and international news of look at this cop using her badge to get out of this situation that was obviously an, a violation. Um, so, yeah. We have uh, someone who wrote in who asks, what does he make of the fact, meaning Justin, what do you make of the fact that the Tampa police chief knew she was being recorded, yet she flashed her bag anyway, badge that is anyway, and she gave the business card. This is something we didn't hear on the audio we just played, but she handed the business card to the deputy and said, hey, look, if there's anything you need, let us know. So is do you think that that's a, something that was significant in this video? Yeah, definitely. I mean, kind of like we talked about a little bit ago, that it talks that that speaks to the police culture, right? That just saying, "Hey, you you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours," kind of thing. Take my card. I'm serious. Anything you need, right? I'll take care of you. Basically, that's another big question. You know, I asked uh, PCSO the next day. I said, um, "What about Deputy Jacoby? You know, he didn't follow protocol, and he heard that she was the police chief, and he said, "All right, we'll have a good night then. See you later." Take care, guys. Um, 
And PCSO said that he's not being reprimanded. So, you know, you have uh, Chief O'Connor resigning because she's the subject of this video. Deputy Jacoby isn't even being recommend, reprimanded. I will say, too, that Keith O'Connor, who was actually driving the golf cart, right, he's the head of code enforcement in Tampa. So you have the head of code of Tampa who, who manages a very important aspect of Tampa city government who doesn't lay his head in the city of Tampa, you know. And I will say at the beginning of that video, he seems a little out of sorts. I'm not sure what was going on. I don't want to get too far into conjecture, but um, that is concerning too. Our guest is Justin Garcia, reporter with Creative Loafing Tampa. You kind of alluded to this earlier in the in your in this interview, but there were signs before she was even hired that Mary O'Connor might be a risky choice for for Tampa police chief. And yet, um, even though people brought this up before she was hired, it seems that Tampa Mayor Jane Castor kind of um, just really bulldozed this this nom her nomination through, or or however the whatever the term would be. Um, so, what were some of those signs? Yeah, so there was a previous arrest in the 90s um, when Keith O'Connor, well, but he was not her husband yet. Her name was Mary Minter at the time. They were pulled over. Keith was arrested for a DUI. Mary uh, kind of freaked out and punched a Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputy, um, kicked the windows of the car, all this stuff. And uh, when Castor held a sudden press conference and just announced that Mary O'Connor was a police chief back in February without city council approval, without going through the process. She said she's starting the job today. You know, I looked her up and I found that and I reached out to the city's communications director and I said, that's not good, right? And, you know, he was like, oh, people already know about that. But then we put it out there again and people were like, oh, a lot of people said, I didn't know about this, you know? And that was a big red flag, you know? I will say that Mary O'Connor later on with our reporting, we got a bunch of documents from, um, uh, the crime-free multi-housing program, which is now known as uh, Renting While Black, and the Stop and Frisk program, now, no, now known as Biking While Black, and Mary O'Connor was involved in both of those programs. She helped oversee them. So did Castor, too. So those are red flags to us as well, and we were kind of raising those red flags. Meanwhile, some powerful entities in the area, like even the Times wrote an editorial saying that they should just appoint, city council should just appoint Mary O'Connor just to get get on with it, you know? Um, so th th there was a lot of kind of, like you said, kind of just pushing her into that position while there were concerns from council, concerns from a lot of local leaders as well. Well, Justin, I've kept you on longer than I promised, but is there anything else that our listeners should know or any angles to this story that they might be uh, hearing from you in the next few days? Uh, yeah, I'm putting in a lot of uh, public information requests just to kind of see the backstory of what happened here, how it all played out, you know, uh, one of our jobs as journalists is to, you know, hear what uh, what people in power are saying, and always just make sure we're make we're we're making sure to double check that that's true and everything is accurate. So there'll be more to come in the in the days coming up for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Justin. Yep, thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming on. That was Justin Garcia, a reporter with Creative Loafing Tampa. It was his reporting that led to the release of body cam footage of the Tampa police chief and eventually to her resignation. So we'll be right back after this very short music break from Irish rock legends that I picked out for Justin. Here's some Thin Lizzy. Oh, awesome. Very cool.